Well, in this last video, we are going to continue our discussion about slope, but this time we're going to talk about slope in terms of the average rate of change, because that's really what it is. I have a picture for you right here, and let's say that I wanted to talk about the uh, rate of change for this for boys between the ages of, in this particular case, 13 and 18. So here I have a growth chart of, let's say, um, an, average, an average man. And I know that on average, a 13-year-old uh, is 57 inches tall. And on average, a, an 18-year-old male would be 76 inches tall. And so you can see that I have kind of this plot going on. And it looks like a curve. But I could come back and say, if I were to connect a straight line between the ages of 13 and 18, Okay, if I created a line right there, we have a, what's called a secant line. Now, that doesn't really matter to you right now, but the point of that is if I have a line showing up here, then that means I have a slope of my line. And we've been talking about the slope of line being the change in the y's over the changes in the x's. And if we apply that then to this particular scenario or the average rate of change idea, what that says is that I can come up with the average rate of growth between 13 and 18 for a man. So a man's average growth rate between the ages of 13 and 18 can be calculated using the slope. And we know slope is the change in the y's over the x's, so we simply took the difference in the y's, divided it by the difference in the x's, and you can see that we end up with this value, 3 and 4 fifths, or maybe I want to see that as, what, 3.8. So on average, I would say that um, the average growth rate is 3.8 inches per year for a male. And we have a rather for fancy formula for the average rate of change of a function. But don't let this get you all scared or anything, because really what we have is, notice, I have one point here. This set of ordered pairs represents a point on a line, or on a curve, I should say. And this point right here represents the second point on a curve. The only difference between what you see here and what we started our videos out with is that this time, the points are written in function notation as opposed to just the x's and the y's. And if you look at the formula for the average rate of change, this is f of x2, which means the function evaluated when x for x2, which is the y-coordinate of an ordered pair, minus the y-coordinate of another ordered pair divided by the changes in the x's like we know it to be. Okay, so it's a different way to look at the formula, but the concept is really going to be the same as far as finding out slope. This question says, I would like to find the average rate of change for the function f of x is equal to the square root of x, and I'm going from x1 is equal to 4 to x2 is equal to 100. All right, so that's a lot of words in there, and now how do I apply it? Well, the average rate of change, like I've already said, is the function evaluated at x2 minus the function evaluated at x1. All of that is divided by x2 minus x1, the slope, right? Well, how do I know what the function evaluated at x2 is? This is the function, okay? So if the function f of x is equal to the square root of x, then I'm going to plug in x1, so the function at x1 has to be the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now the function evaluated at x2 is the square root of 100, which is 10. So now this becomes my function evaluated at, at x2, which is 10, minus my function evaluated at x1, which was 2, all divided by x2, which is 100, minus x1, 
which is 4. So 10 minus 2 is 8, divided by 100 minus 4, which is 96. And I'm going to put this in a reduced fraction form, which would be 1 12th. So what have I got going on here? Pictorially, what I have is I know that the square root function looks like this. And if I'm here at 4 on the x-axis, that would be 2 on the y-axis. And if I'm out at 100, so pretend I went all the way out to 100 here, then that would be 10 on the y-axis, right? And 1 12th represents the slope of this line that passes through these two points. So the slope of that line is 1 12th. And that's how you find the average rate of change.